at first, congratulations for Bent uh, 70th birthday. <laughs> so uh, uh, basically, I wanted to come here from first day, but the problem is uh, uh, this week, uh, they had a big uh, light fair in New York, so I had to go there because uh, I found that two companies, one of my company is a lighting company, uh, our company has a booth, you know, so I had to be there so for a while. So. <laughs> And uh, so, so today I talk about the uh, invention of blue LED and uh, 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 laser. And this is laser dial, no? And this is the light. <laughs> so, so lighting is everywhere, you know. You know, without lighting, you know, you cannot read the book at night time. And this is a uh, satellite image. So you can see these uh, industry countries, they are causing a lot of uh, global warming problem, no? <laughs> they use a lot of energies. So, uh, so first uh, uh, source of light is from the sun. So sunlight is most friendly for human eyes, for human. So for we are, uh, you know, automatically uh, try to make uh, copies of sunlight using LED and other technology. So history of uh, white lighting is this one. So, so 18th century, you know, long time ago, you know, fire and the flame. And uh, uh, 19th century, incandescent bulb lamp. And uh, from 19, I don't know, <laughs> 20th century, before 20th century, fluorescent lamp. And from 21st century, LED. But my opinion is the uh, next century uh, is uh, laser lighting, using uh, this blue laser dial. To, also, blue laser dial can be used for the, to make white lighting. So after LED, <laughs> next is laser lighting. So what is a uh, LED? Uh, so here, today, high school, they are high school students, so I simplified everything, you know. So basically, uh, so this is a basic structure of LED, light emitting dials. There is a substrate. On the substrate, we grow N-type N -type layer and uh, active layer, we say active layer or emitting layer. And there is a P-type layer. So basically, most important layers are these three layers. Basically, LED composed of three layers, N-type layer, emitting layer, and P-type layer. You know, color is blue layer, and red layer, and green layers. So in the case of blue LED, there are no uh, emitting layer, no P-type layer. So Basically, we invented the emitting layer and the P-type layer. That's the reason we received the Nobel Prize. <laughs> so it's very simple, no? <laughs> Just, you know. So this is a basic structure of LED. So, so this is a real product of blue LED. For, sub, uh, for substrate, we use sapphire. And on the sapphire substrate, there is an type layer and the emitting layer and the P-type layer. So uh, my opinion, most important layer is the emitting layer because the emission color is you know, determined by the materials. So by changing the material, we can change the color of the emission layer. So by changing the material of emitting layer or active layer, you know, emission coming from this emitting layer. For this emitting layer, we use indium gallium nitride. So by changing of composition of indium, of indium gallium nitride layer, we can change color from red to uh, blue to also UV. We can make from infrared to UV emissions by using these same structures. By changing the indium composition of this indium gallium nitride emitting layer. So, but the most uh, uh, biggest market is white, white light. White light is used for the all kinds of lighting source. So how to make white is just by mixing of blue and yellow, we can make white. Also, another technique is just mixing of three primary color, blue, green, red. By mixing, we can get white. But right now, most a major technique with this one, this is very simple. Only we need two, two, no? two color. In this case, three color. So it costs a lot. So industry always have to think about the cost. you know. So this is the most popular technique right now. So real, uh, so real white LED, how to make white? Just uh, they, we use blue LED, also phosphor. So phosphor changes the blue color to yellow. 
by mixing of yellow and blue, we can get white. You know, so this is the most popular technique. Also, another technique we can also we add red phosphor. <laughs> you can we can cut uh, add another red. You know. So how to make a white LED uh, bulb lamp? So just uh, we make after making a white LED by using put put a lot of white LED chip, we can make white bulb lamp or white you know fluorescent all kind of lamp. So uh, so I told you so this week there is a big light fair in New York. All of, you know when you have the light fair, more than 90 percent of 95 percent of the lamp is made of LED now. All of light fair all over the world. But still, you don't see LED uh, lamp here. But all of light fair, 95% of the lamp is now LED. So it means all near future, all of lamp become LED. Because uh, efficiency is much higher than conventional lamp. So this shows that luminous efficacy means that efficiency, basically. Efficiency of LED as a function of developed years. So basically, red LED was invented in the 60s, and the efficiency of uh, red LED is increased like this. But now, material was, uh, you know, I told you, emission color is determined by the materials. So in the case of red LEDs, now people use aluminum, indium, gallium, phosphide. But initially, they use different material. And, uh, but in the case of blue and green, I told you, everybody uses indium, gallium, nitrate emitting there. And now, you know, so, so basically, we could invent the blue and the green LEDs in 93, 95, and now white LED available, the efficiency of white LED like this. So this is R&D level, R&D, not commercial based one. Commercial based one always half of this efficiency, you know. But the efficiency, you know, much higher than incandescent bulb lamp and fluorescent lamp. So, I told you, so red LED was invented in the 60s, <laughs> but the red LED is very interesting. You can see, basically, four groups, almost the same time, they developed the blue, red LEDs, four groups, within one year, you know? Almost the same, four groups developed the red LEDs in the 60s, for the, you know, almost the same time. So I don't know which group is the first, you know? <laughs> so, and uh, this is uh, UCSB. So UCSB, you know, uh, Herb Cromer received no prize in, uh, in, in physics in 2000 because he invented the uh, uh, idea of heterostructures, heterostructures. So for LED, laser dye, we always have to use heterostructures, double heterostructures. So, you know, so, so we have to use his invention of heterostructures to, to develop high-efficient LEDs. So at UCS, we have a big uh, satellite lighting uh, energy electron center. So all of students, professors are working to develop next generation solid-state lighting using uh, indium gallium nitrate based materials. So impact. So, so application of LED, you know, so initially uh, I developed the high brightness blue LEDs in 93 for the first time. So in 1930, when we developed our first high brand blue LEDs, at that time, uh, you know, all of cell phone company, cell phone company like Nokia, was developing the cell phone. But at that time, the biggest problem, they didn't find a big display, uh, good display, because cell phone needs the uh, cell phone is mobile. So means, uh, so battery is very small, on the voltage is three volt, no. At that time, no display which can be operated by small battery. So coincidentally, we developed the blue LEDs, and immediately all of the cell phone ca company came to our company to use blue LEDs and the white LEDs. And then they could develop cell phone. So first, the biggest market for the blue LED is cell phone. And then next is the all kind of mobile device, you know, iPhone, iPad, everything. And, uh, and also this, uh, you know, <laughs> agriculture writing and decorative writing. And now it's automobile headlamp and uh, also LED TV. And this is a projector, no? Also now is uh, uh, this uh, lighting is a big market now. So LED efficiency is like this. Uh, so oil lamp efficiency, oil lamp, you know, 
point one lumen powered, and uh, Thomas Edison <laughs> invented the light bulb. This is uh, only 16 lumen part. But the fluorescent lamp is 70 lumen part. LED is now 300 lumen part. But this is R&D level. <laughs> you cannot buy it. Commercial based one is, I think, uh, half. So 150 or 130 lumen part. But still much higher than this conventional writing. So by replacing this conventional writing, we can uh, save a lot of energy, you know? Also, lifetime. <laughs> lifetime LEDs, you know? All LED, com LED lamp companies say, lifetime is 50 years, 30 years, 40 years. <laughs> so after installing LED lamp, you don't need any maintenance at all until you change the house. <laughs> so 30 years, 40 years, <laughs> longer than human life, I think, now. So, so this is uh, in California, electric consumption in California. So, you know, electric, so basically lighting consumes 35% of electric consumption in California, in the United States. You know, that like this. So, uh, so this is a, a Department of Energy estimated this one, you know, in two, by 2030, you know, for, for in 2030, you know, 46 percent electricity is saving. Currently, all of you know people now try to change the all of the conventional lighting with LEDs. In current, in consider of current change of speed, this 46 percent electricity is saving in 2030, and the value of the money, the 250 billion US dollars from you no know, 2010 to 2030. And of uh, the generation of carbon dioxide emission in 185 million tons. And the easier to understand this one. Basically, we can eliminate 30 uh, power plant. This is a power plant, average power plant, including a nuclear power plant, oil power plant. So basically, 30 power plant is uh, eliminated by 2030. So you can understand it's a huge energy reduction. And this is only for in the United States. All over the world, I think uh, maybe five times, six times. Now China is installing a lot of <laughs> power plant. I think <laughs> maybe 60, six times. No? So it's huge, no? So uh, another big is the solar powered LED lighting. For this is uh, 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 third countries. So basically, uh, these regions basically no electricity. So basically, all over the world, one point of Five billion people has no electricity. So no electricity means no lighting at night time. So those people have used uh, this uh, kerosene lamp, you know, kerosene lamp. And the kerosene lamp has uh, three problems, because uh, carbon dioxide emission is a health hazard, no? And also very dangerous. It causes a fire at night time, no? It's very dangerous. Also, most of the biggest problems are very expensive. Because this oil is now very expensive, so the, I said this is 100 dollars a year but, per year. But now uh, uh, people told me 100, more than 150 dollars per year. This is very expensive. But using this one, white LED and uh, battery and solar cell, only cost is uh, three dollars per year. Because this one, this is, uh, is uh, only price is less than 10 dollars, and. Uh, Probably lifetime is three, two, two or three years because battery lifetime is too short. So you work for chemistry, please input the battery lifetime. <laughs> Only what to say. Battery is a problem right now. I told you this is a lifetime of 50 years. <laughs> Solar cell, I don't know, this is also very long. Battery is too short because chemistry is, uh, in, you know, chemistry, you know, I don't know how to <laughs> improve. So, so, but you know, very cheap, three dollars. So all of the third country, they use this technology, clean technology. So third country uses clean technology. But the problem is the industry country. Industry country use all the traditional technology, so. So why was it hard to uh, make? So next, how to make, uh, how to invent the blue LEDs. So basically in 80s, in 80s, 90s, uh, you know, invention, uh, development of blue LED is so popular among all of the scientists all over the world. Very popular. And the, uh, at that time, there are two kinds of material available. Uh, one is a zinc selenide based material, and another is a gallium nitride based material. 
So, but in the case of zinc selenide, you know, using gallium arsenide substrate, basically that is much much zero, zero percent that is much. So it means the crystal quality is very good in the case of zinc selenide. But on the other hand, the gallium nitride, available substrate, sapphire. So in this case, lattice mismatch is 16 percent. So it means a huge number of crystal dislocation density, huge number of crystal defects. So basically, in 80s, 90s, basically all scientists, researchers selected zinc selenide to develop blue LEDs. So this is a <laughs> image of cross-section TM. This is a gallium nitride grown sapphire. You can see dark line. This is a, you know, dislocation means a crystal defect. And, but the magnification is different, but I tried to find the same magnification, but I couldn't find. But this, this is zinc selenide grown gallium arsenide, magnification different, but nothing. In the same magnification, basically no dark line defect, zero. So clean, no? So it means the crystal core is much, much better. So all the scientists selected zinc selenide in the 80s and 90s. So, so in, 18, so in my case, I started the blue LEDs in 89. 89, you know, zinc selenide or gallium acid, high crystal quality, basically uh, dislocation density is less than 10 to the third. So basically 90, 90% of the researchers science selected zinc selenide to develop blue LEDs. On gallium nitride on sapphire, poor crystal quality, dislocation density more than 10 to the ninth. You can see six order difference, <laughs> huge difference, you know. So, Basically, little, little researcher worked for <laughs> you know, this material. So in Japan, one of the biggest conferences in this field is the Japanese Society Applied Physics Conference. This is a big, big, one of the biggest conferences in Japan. So in 91, 3M, American company 3M, could develop the first blue-green laser diode using zinc selenide. So, so zinc selenide became very popular. So zinc selenide session, 500 audience, more than 500. This room is fully occupied in the case of zinc selenide session. Gallium nitride session, I went to gallium session, small room. And uh, interesting, the other two noble lord, Professor Akasaki, and uh, Professor Akasaki always session chair. And another number of Professor Amano was a student of Professor Akasagi. So he was, uh, he was presenting the university result. And the two or three audience, including me, I worked for a company, so I never <laughs> did that presentation. So this session, is, it takes only, you know, one lesson, one now. <laughs> you know, after I did this session, I went to this thing, session. I couldn't enter the, the, this session, too many people. So, so, you know, so at that time, Garmin has no future. Garmin has to move to zinc selenide because uh, 3M could develop fast blue-green desert diode using zinc selenide in 91. So in my case, in my case, you know, from 88 to 89, I went to University of Florida as a bit in researcher. My age was 35 years old at that time. And, uh, and I had to work together with a uh, PhD student at the University of Florida. And all of the PhD students asked me, asked me, do you have PhD degree? I said, no, I had only a master's degree. And the next they asked me, uh, have you published any scientific paper? They said, that we want to read it. I said, no, I have never published any scientific paper, zero. And then they treated me like a technician, you know. <laughs> In the United States, if people don't have a PhD degree, they are called a technician. <laughs> in the United States, if you want to be a scientist, you have to have a PhD degree. So one year later, I came back to uh, uh, you know, Japan. So my dream became to get a PhD degree. So at that time, in Japan, we could get a PhD degree by publishing five scientific papers. It's called a paper degrees. At that time, we, don't, we didn't have to go to the university to get a PhD degree. Just publishing five scientific papers, we could get a PhD degree. It's called paper degree. So my dream was publishing papers. So at that time, I already working for a company, no? So, so in my case, which one is better to publish paper? Zinc selenide or gallium? Zinc selenide means tons of paper. 
ガルムライターです。ベースカリー、フィーペーパーの。So I expect that, oh, if I select the Galimath, it's easy to, to publish paper, no? Any result, I can publish paper, no? <笑> Think so, and almost impossible. All kinds of paper, many paper. So I selected the Galim Rider, but I never thought I could invent Blue LED. Never. Zero. So, so basically, Blue LED, I, you know, so basically, three layers. P, Compose three layers, prism, P type Galim Rider, you know, also emitting layer, ending light, N type Galim Rider. So, problems, I tell you, this one. No P type Galim Rider, no ending Galim Rider in, in 89. So, that, so, this is the key. So, we have to develop this one to receive a Nobel Prize, no? So, develop Garim Light. So, initially, you know, in 89, I came back to the, came back to, from the University of Florida in 89, um, March 89. So, first, I, you know, I initially purchased the MOCBD, Metal Organic Chemical Bed Deposition. This is a, a crystal growth reactor. I have to grow crystal of gallium nitride. So I purchased the commercial base MOCBD. It cost 2 million US dollars. It's very expensive, no? Uh, for a couple of months, I tried to grow gallium nitride, but no crystal growth. Even if there are crystal growth, color was black. You know? <laughs> gallium nitride crystal means should be transparent, but black. So after a couple of months, I tried to g r o w no result. So, And a couple of months later, I made the decision. I had to modify the, this reactor. So I ha had to modify this uh, you know, commercial based reactor for almost one and a half years. Every day, every morning, I modify the reactor. And every afternoon, I did some crystal growth, several rounds. So I continued this pattern almost one and a half year, years. And one year, and a half years later, I could develop this uh, reactor. I named it 2Flow MOCBD. Usually, you know, MOCBD, this is one flow, but I added another subflow. I named two flow MOCBD. So, this is the、uh, you know, biggest break for,、uh, breakthrough in my life. Nobody found it, nobody、uh, committed, never cited this one because this is not related to physics, but it's most important. Because this reactor is the best in the world. After this invention, any crystal growth, best in the world. Any device structure, best in the world. So basically, I, developed, I invented this one in the October 90s. So since October 9th, I became the top in this field. All, since always, still top. <laughs> Because this is the key, you know? Here, you can either say, reactor is the best, you any know, you know, crystal is best, you no? Know? Device is the best. So this is the key. So for example, yeah, so simplified one, this one. So this is a, a you know, noble gross finest, high quality g a l i m r a t So, this is a N type gun, black, you know, black color one. This、uh, I could get the best one. But this one is already no, 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 nothing new because conventional N type gun are available. But anyway, so crystal quality. So, crystal quality, how to estimate the crystal quality? We usually measure the mobility. mobility. So, higher the better. So, before my invention of two flow MCBD, As a Nobel laureate, Professor Akasaki Amaru always obtained the best, in, result, best result in the world. So, after my invention, always I became number one, top. Because, for example, mobility without buffer, Akasaki Amaru gets 50, in my case, 200. And、uh, buffer layer, Akasaki Amaru obtained 450, I got 600. So, you know, because two flow MOC is the best in the world, <laughs> any result is the best. And the next is P type gallium l i g h t e d P type color, I told you, yellow,、uh, green color one. So, usually, in order to obtain P type color, we dope to、uh, magnesium, magnesium. But、uh, always not semi i n s u l a t e like an N type gun. But in my case, just,、uh, I use a summer alleling to remove hydrogen, and I got the P type color. This is a simplified one. You know, so, so, I could get the green one. It's called the hydrogen passivation. So basically, you know, so when we grow、uh, magnesium, do, magnesium dope to gallium nitride, always automatically the atomic hydrogen incorporated the crystal and、uh, we formed the magnesium hydrogen complex. You know, so this is a long time mystery because、uh, for 20 years mystery, nobody could understand why you couldn't get the P type gallium nitride, you know, because、uh, just I cried about the mechanism. Because hydrogen is coming from dissociation, ammon dissociation of ammonia gas. 
and by just using a thermal array, you know, we could remove hydrogen and we got the P type gallium nitride, you know. So this is 20 years mystery, you know. And the next is uh, indium gallium nitride. This is a key material. This, uh, this uh, emits the blue emission, green and red, and just uh, indium gallium nitride. But uh, this is also the biggest problem. For this is also 20 years problem. People try to grow indium, nobody could grow indium gallium nitride. You know, and, uh, but uh, using 2 pro MOCV, I could grow fast, uh, high quality indium gallium nitride, which showed strong blue and green emission in 92. So basically, you know, so this is uh, basically a you know, professor and Akasaki Amano in 89, they developed uh, this PN gallium nitride homojunction LEDs. No indium gallium nitride. So gallium nitride is a uh, band gap energy is 3.4 electron volt. So UV emission, not blue emission, 369 emission, not blue emission. Also, uh, this is a homojunction, not a high efficiency. Because we need a double heterosexual. I told you. Uh, Professor Alphonse and Chroma invented this idea in, you know, and they received a Nobel Prize. So everybody has to use double structure to make high efficient uh, LEDs. So in this case, we need indium gallium nitride. So homojunction LED like this, so basically, electron is coming from N-type and by under bias condition, P, uh, hole is coming from P-type layer, and the electron hole recombine to emit the photon. But in this case, 360 nanometer UV emission because the material is gallium nitride, 360. But in this case, you can understand, electron hole diffuse everywhere. You know, like, uh, <laughs> but in the case of double heterostructure, electron and the hole are accumulated in the active or emitting layer. Because uh, you can understand. Because uh, in this case, like this, uh, you know, is a small room, young girl, young boys, uh, you know, confined to the small, easily recombine, it emit photon, no? But in this case, girls, a whole, uh, uh, young girls, boys, everywhere, spread it out. In this, it's difficult to recombine, no? No emission. So double structure is the best, you know, to, make, to get uh, high efficient LEDs. But the problem is uh, no active layer, no emitting layer. Because at that time, indium gallium light uh, was very difficult to get it. The crystal walls, interview of crystal walls. So in 91, you know, especially in Japan, you know, this Matsuoka's group tried to grow indium gallium nitride, but the problem is no emission. This is uh, room temperature, room tem this room temperature, indium gallium nitride means uh, emission should be here, but there are yellow emission, no? This is uh, this emission coming from crystal defect. So basically, no band to band emission. We need band to band emission. But uh, in 92, we got the fast, uh, high, you know, very bright blue and green LEDs from indium gallium nitride uh, layer using two flow MOCV. So I told you, two flow MOCV is a key, you know, <laughs> most important because we got this one for first time. So we got the emitting layer in 92, and then we can now make a we got the P-type gallium nitride using summer reading, and also we got the indium gallium nitride using two flow MOCVD. So we can assemble these three layers, no? and we can get uh, high efficient blue LEDs. So in 93, we got the high efficient blue LEDs using uh, indium gallium nitride double heterostructure. Indium gallium nitride layer is sandwiched by N-type layer and the P-type layer. So this structure is, uh, is used for the you know, uh, press release of the Nobel Prize Foundation. You know, they just copied our structures. And also they, you know, <laughs> you know, yeah. also they say double heterosia. Heart of the blue is double heterosia, no? So double heterosia is required, so. So, but uh, now all of LED, blue LED, use a uh, uh, quantum wave structure, quantum wave. Quantum, using quantum structure, uh, much brighter. We developed the first quantum blue, green, yellow LEDs in 95. And uh, I expected uh, this structure, using this structure, we could get this Nobel Prize, but <laughs> not, not this one, no. Yeah. <laughs> also, also, we developed a fast uh, blue laser, violet laser diode uh, using uh, indium nitride much quantum structure. 
And also, very important result, this one. Because I told in 80, 80s, 90s, this all of scientists, they are common sense. This location should be less than 10 to the third to make high efficient LEDs and reliable LEDs. So this shows the efficiency of various LEDs as a function of the dislocation density, crystal defect. So initially, red LED means gallium aluminum arsenide. People use this material, gallium aluminum arsenide, to make red LEDs. You can see in this case, if dislocation density is more than 10 to the third, efficiency becomes smaller. So due to this reason, 80s, 90s, all scientists thought a dislocation density should be less than 10 to the third. But in the case of galenite on sapphire, always due to that mismatch, this log density always 10 to the ninth. Still 10 to the ninth. You can see a lot of LEDs as a commercial base. Still this log density disorder, 10 to the ninth. You can see only this region, only indium galenite shows a high efficiency. Indium galenite. But galenite, when you use galenite as an emitting layer, no emission. Galenite is the same as conventional material. So only in the granite shows very high, shows very high efficiency in spite of a huge number of dislocation density. So gallium in the granite is a magical or a miracle materials. So that's the reason we go to the luckily go to the high efficient grade. Without in the granite, we couldn't get Nobel Prize. But the problem is Nobel Committee never referred to in the granite. Never. Zero. I cannot understand why they, you know, they refer to only buffer layer and the P-type layer and the next jump to the high branch blade. They didn't even mention anything. This, this is the most important key material to make high efficiency. Yeah. And the, the, reason, the reason why, you know, in the ground shows high efficiency in spite of a huge number of dislocation is, uh, you know, Colin Humphrey, it worked very hard. So Colin Humphrey is all the same, pro same result. Basically, using atom polymer, you can see this is the indium gallium light layer, indium gallium layer. Red region is the indium rich region, blue region is the indium poor region. So indium rich region is the band gap energy is small. So it means uh, this red region forms a, a local state. So uh, electron and hole are injected into indium gallium light layer. They recombine radiative at, uh, at this local state before they are captured to the, this crystal defect. So the number of these locals is much larger than the number of crystal defect. So that's the reason. You know, this was either proposed in 96, 7, huh? Okay, so historical process. So basically, so as a noble laureate, uh, Professor and Akasaki Amano you know, developed the buffer area to improve the crystal quality for the first time, 85. And also they developed the first P-type layer using electron beam irradiation treatment. But in my case, you know, I developed a summer reading to activate P-type galimeter. Also, I clarified the mechanism of P-type galimeter. It's, it's caused by hydrogen passivation, no? And now all of LED companies are summer reading much easier. Also, most important uh, inventions are in the galimeter emitting layer, you know? This is a key material, you know, because this material shows a high efficiency in spite of a huge number of dislocation density. So this is a uh, you know, lot of uh, history. So basically, you know, up to 89, you know, 85, Akasagama developed a buffer layer to improve the crystal quality. Also, they developed a fast P-type granite. But in my case, I told you, in 91, I invented a two-flow MOCB, just a crystal growth reactor. After that, you can see uh, all the invention come from my, our group. Because uh, <laughs> reactor is the best in the world, any crystal is best in the world. Any device, best in the world, you know? <laughs> so, so new two is the most important to achieve the breakthrough, you can say, you know? So, so UCS vision, so next, uh, UCS vision, now next I told the laser lighting. So, so this shows the efficiency of the LED and the laser diode. This is external, course, not wall plug efficiency, it, it's tricky, but basically efficiency. So in the case of blue LED, with increase the current density, efficiency becomes small. So we cannot increase the current, if we increase the, this current density around uh, this order, 0.5, uh, almost zero, no, no light. But in the case of laser diodes, still high, you know, current density, still efficiency very high. 
So, so in the case of, you know, for example, when we make a 60 watt, 60 watt incandescent equilibrium bulb lamp using LED, emitting area becomes this area, 28 square millimeter, because we have to reduce the current density around here. But in the case of laser diode, we can increase the current density around here. We can use tiny, tiny chip. So, you know, so using a laser diode, you know, all kinds of chips, small, small, everything in the system is small. You know. So at UCS, we are developing the next generation laser diode. Oh, yeah. So we can make high power laser diode. You know, this one is 1.2 watt. You know. so, so already laser lighting. You know, Laser lighting using, you know, just laser lighting, the same, uh, just we replace the blue LEDs with this blue laser diode. And the phosphor is the same, other the same. So laser lighting is used for the automobile headlamp, automobile headlamp in, in Germany. Daimler Benz, Audi, already they use uh, this laser lighting for automobile headlamp. In this case, irradiation distance, LED headlamp is only 300 meter. Laser lighting is now one kilometer, more than one kilometer. In Germany, you know, autobahn, autobahn is huge, you know, they, <laughs> they need uh, this one, more safe, you know. This is dangerous, you no? Know? So that the German companies are eager to develop, use the laser lighting, you know. And, uh, but in Japan, we don't need the laser lighting because, uh, you know, always like this. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, laser projector. Also, laser projector is also projector is now almost like TV using laser dial, blue laser dial, because it's so bright. And uh, so recently, I saw the Pico projector. Pico projector, you know, so, you know, this one size of this size box. It's connected iPhone, and you can see beautiful 50 inch using any walls. It's projector, small mini part, but 50 inch, almost same as TV. It's amazing. <laughs> So this is big, but uh, you can see the small uh, this size box. So you don't need a TV anymore, just an iPhone and a small box. What's the 15 TV, no. So that is the uh, next edition TV. OK, so thanks. OK, acknowledgment. So basically, uh, I invented Blue LED at uh, my former company, Nichia. It's a, it was a small company, remote. <laughs> it located <is> remote, <laughs> remote city. And uh, especially my colleagues are in the department. Oh, it, sorry, it is in Japanese. <laughs> but uh, you know, my colleagues are in the department. And uh, also founder of Nichi, you know, this guy. And now I, I moved to UCSB in 2000. And uh, especially I like to thank Hendy Young and uh, Dean Rodher. And my colleagues, Steve and Jim Mesh. That's all. Thank you. Thank you for this amazing invention. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I think we have time for questions. We will return to this in the panel later, but mm -hmm. one of your questions. I can't see any hands. There is one up there, okay. You are ready, okay. Uh, hi, uh, very good presentation about lasers and LED. Good. <laughs> really nice. But I have a question about uh, the headlights. Because you were saying uh, you were laser headlights that could reach up to one kilometer. And isn't this a, a danger on the roads uh, because of the strength of the lasers? Can't it be a danger for the traffic that comes uh, the other way? They can be blinded and uh, stuff can happen. Oh, okay. Oh. So, uh, uh, it, it's not easy. so this is, uh, you know, uh, latest technology. Almost this is the same as a project. If uh, you know, car is coming here, or this region because automatically become black. Only they irradiate this region. So also, if people are cross here, suddenly stop the light. It's because intelligent light using some sensor. So already they RD and the diamond those technology. So it's it's very safe. You know. So right now, if uh, this car is very bright, you, know, you can see. Four. But uh, automatically, they darken this region, and the only light is this, this region. So it becomes intelligent writing. It's almost like a projector. Yeah. One more question. Uh, yeah. Uh, I just wonder if it's possible to do... Um... Yeah, I'm oh, here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
uh, if it's possible to do dimmable no. LED lamps that yeah, we are could, we could as take one more question uh, later. energy yes. efficient as usual LED lamps, or if you lose energy or efficiency when you do them dimmable. Oh, dimmable. Oh, dimmable is just we reduce the current, so efficiency should be same. Okay. Yeah, efficiency. Just we reduce the current. Yeah. Yes. Hello? Oh, it's it on. OK, uh, thank you for your talk. It was really interesting. Uh, I would like to ask you a question. Uh, it seems so, uh, the laser seems so good. And uh, I, I mean, more, more, I mean, better than the LED. But still, why is it not popular right now? It seems so good, and uh, it should be popular, right? Oh, laser lighting? You know? Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, laser lighting is still two big pro uh, three big problems. One is a uh, uh, wall plug efficiency. So LED is a uh, wall plug efficiency is uh, already between 50 and 60 percent, around 60 percent wall LED. But the laser diode wall plug efficiency is still 30 percent, half of the LEDs wall plug efficiency. Also, another problem is the cost. A laser diode cost is uh, 10 times or 20 times higher than the LEDs. Also, another uh, problem is regulation. One, one people have heard regulation. All country has a, a regulation of laser, laser diode. We cannot do laser diode for the you know, display and those things. Because the regulation says the laser is called eye damage or something. Mm. You know, when I went to Saudi Arabia, I cannot bring the you know, carry no. back the laser diode in Saudi Arabia. Laser diode is very dangerous, you know? So, but uh, in this case, we make uh, white lighting, we use laser diode, mm, it's safe because uh, uh -huh. we use uh, phosphor. After phosphor, okay. it's yeah. become, yeah. Um, yeah. you know, uh, not a coherent light, uh, same as LED lighting. So it's safe. Thank you very much.